This is going to be the next video in our series on multiple linear regression. Specifically, we're going to look at the model appropriate for unique intercepts. Now, at the start of each of these, for each new option we have in the framework of multiple linear regression, I want to remind you that when you're applying multiple linear regression to a data set, you really just have to make the choice yourself about which model seems most appropriate for the data set you have available. If you think there should be unique intercepts, but parallel lines, so they all have one slope, but different intercepts, then this is the option you would choose. You will not choose all of your options available and present those to your reader. You will choose the one option within the framework of multiple linear regression that seems most appropriate for your data set and use that as your analysis. Just pick one. So we're going to continue our example about hospitals, infection risk in R. So here is, I know it looks like a lot of code, but let's just simplify it for a little bit. Um, the basics of the code we ran through in the overview on multiple linear regression. We're going to read in a data set that we'll name hospital. We're going to use the library's ggplot2 and dplyr. And then to start, let's just, well, let's get rid of this. That, okay, there we go. To start, we'll just repeat all that code so you can see the most basic plot associated with multiple linear regression and not yet any models overlaid on the scatter plot. So we're going to try to predict infection risk based on stay. And we're going to see if we can include both the categorical explanatory variable region, which we have appropriately told R is a factor because region is numerically encoded, even though we should trust that you can't add uh, regions one and two and get region three out. And that doesn't really make sense based on how regions are defined. So we're going to use the one categorical explanatory variable region and the one numeric explanatory variable stay measured in days to try to predict infection risk. Now we're going to fit a unique intercept model, which looks like this. So I'm just going to call it fit u ints for unique intercepts. We're going to use the function lm. Infection risk is going to be our response variable, so it goes on the left. Tilde, that's shift button to the left of one, uh, says explain infection risk using region as a categorical variable plus stay. And you should always put your categorical explanatory variable first. And then those variables come from the data set named hospital. So we can run that line of code and nothing really gets returned from R. So we'll just trust that it worked. And in order to make the appropriate plot for the unique intercepts model, we had developed code that looks like this, which says overwrite, overwrite the variable named hospital with the variable named hospital after you mutate it such that you create a new column appropriate for the predictions of infection risk, which we call y hat, for the u int model, for the unique intercepts model. And in order to get that new vector out, all you need to do is call the function predict on the model fit underscore u int, which we just fit. So you'll notice we add one variable to this data frame hospital as soon as we run that line of code, where the last variable is named y hat u ints, and it consists of all the uh, points on the multiple lines we have going through the data set, and it will look like this once we plot. Whoops, sorry, copy and paste issue from a previous video. There we go. So we're going to use ggplot on the data set hospital. We're going to put stay on the x-axis and infection risk on the y-axis. We're going to color the points by the factor region. 
we're going to put the points on the plot and we're going to fade them into the background with alpha equals 0.25. If alpha were equal to zero, the points would disappear. And if alpha were equal to one, the points would be as bright as you normally see them. We're going to add to this plot lines with stay on the x-axis and our predictions from our model on the y-axis. That's what actually gives us these lines appropriate to our look. These are all parallel lines, which means they all share one slope, and yet they will all hit the y-axis, which is somewhere over here, at, x, at stay equal to zero days, at different points. And I use the theme minimal here because I want really as little background ink on my plot as possible. So there is the unique intercepts but shared slope model displayed. And we're going to use that plot to help us understand the output from calling summary on the fitted model. So we're going to write out what our model looks like in notation in mathematical notation, and I'm going to call hat on infection risk to say we are, and that's not actual R code, by the way. Maybe I can help differentiate it from R code by using curly braces instead of parentheses. We're going to say put a hat on infection risk, so as to say we're going to try to predict infection risk using these coefficients. And what I'm going to do is write out these coefficients in terms of a model as if we were writing out math right here. So the way it goes is we have an intercept, which is equal to the value rounding of 0.29. So look, our categorical explanatory variable region has numbers for its levels. One is the first number. And you'll notice one is hidden here. You see intercept two, three, four. Well, really intercept is the first level of our categorical explanatory variable. That is for region one. So we go 0.29 plus, and I'm just going to work my way down, uh, 0 0.11 times an indicator variable for region two. And I'm just going to continue working my way down, plus uh, negative 0 0.15 times an indicator variable for region three. I'm running out of room. Can I get rid of region here and just put two and three? Thanks. <laughs> you all have to grant me that. And then I'm just going to keep working my way down. Now here for region four, we've got 0 0.75 rounding times one for region four. Plus, now don't forget relative to our Fitted model above, and I'm trying to get it all in view. We have stay also included in our model. So look what we've done here. For this one term in the function lm, we've built out offsets, an intercept, that is the appropriate intercept for the first level, and then offsets for each next level solely because of this one term in the model LM. After you have all the levels of region accounted for, you're going to add an appropriate slope for stay. Oops, sorry. And that slope is this number right here. So the way it goes is 0 0.41 times stay. And this is what, in you know, pseudo math, our multiple linear regression for unique intercepts looks like. Now watch. If we wanted to make predictions for, let's say, level 1, then essentially we'd have an intercept, 0 0.29 plus... Now, we'd look at the first offset. We'd have 0 0.11 times, are we making a prediction for level 2? We are not. We're making a prediction for level 1. So this term here goes to 0. 
0 times this offset is 0. And what about for this next term in our model? Are we making a prediction for level 3? We are not. This term goes to 0. This whole highlighted term will go to 0. Are we making a prediction for level 4? We are not. We're making a prediction for level 1. So this whole term will go to 0 because of the indicator variable for level 4. And then, oh right, we also have a numerical explanatory variable. So we're going to predict for level 1 with stay equals to, I don't know, let's pick the value 10, because that seems to have a lot of data near it. So then we'll have 0 0.41, the slope on stay, times 10. And whatever value we get out of that is the prediction for level 1 with stay equals to 10. And look how well that matches our plot, 4.4 essentially. At the value 10, region 1 is predicted to have an infection risk of 4.4. You know what would be informative is let's together, you and me, I'll do a prediction for region 4, and then you should practice for regions um, 2 and 3. And you should make sure that the plot matches well the example you create for yourself. So I'm just going to copy and paste because I can modify from there. We're going to change this to level 4, still at stay equals to 10. So we get 0.29 because it's got no indicator variables attached to it. Plus, are we making a prediction for region 2 down here? We are not, so that term will go to 0. Are we making a prediction for region 3? We are not. So that term will go to zero. We are making a prediction for region four. So I'm just going to add that into my model. That one for region four, via the indicator variable, will go away. And notice what we have here if you just group appropriately. We have one new intercept for level four, plus some slope times whatever stay is. So that value there indeed above 4.39 corresponds to with uh, the plot that we see at level t at value 10 for a day a stay in a hospital of 10 days we predict a little bit over five for the infection risk so essentially if you're in region four you don't want to stay in the hospital any longer than you have to according to this model so really this 0.75 is the difference between these two models, because that's all we're asking this unique intercepts model to do, is offset the whole line for the different regions. And look what we have above. We have a hypothesis test for each next region, where this is the offset for region four. So essentially, this whole line here is asking in a hypothesis test, is the intercept, is the difference between region four and region one, since this accounts for the difference between those, is that difference equal to zero or is it not? And as weird as the world as hypothesis testing goes, we would fail to reject since this p-value is not less than 0 0.05. So we would make some sort of conclusion that region 4 does not appear to be different than region 1. But don't forget, you can also get confidence intervals for these plots, for these coefficients. And I encourage you to take the time to try to interpret one of these. I'm going to spend more time interpreting them for more complicated models so that hopefully you can kind of work your way towards an interpretation for this model here.